taken me a long time to figure out how to make a video about grief, but I hope this will provide a little bit of comfort to those who are grieving. Welcome to Tingle Talk. Hello, my tinklings. I've wanted to make this video for a very long time. One of our tinglings, Lynn, very dear tingling, lost her son at the end of last year, and she asked me to make a video about grief, and so I have been thinking on that for a long time, figuring out, I guess, what sort of video to make and how to do that subject justice, which I can't say that this necessarily will, but I am hoping that being able to share and uh, know that we're thinking about each other can help comfort those who are going through a grieving process. So I first do just want to speak directly to Lynn and tell you that I am deeply sorry for your loss, and I know that it's been a fair amount of time since you made this request, but I know that losing your son is probably a pain that will never go. I want you to know that I witnessed that, and I do care about that, and that there is a space here for you to share about your son, and that there is care and warmth to wrap you in. And as this becomes the new normal. I also wanted to offer to you, Lynn, I have been mulling over in my head, as I said, for a long time, and I was wondering if you might enjoy me making a video specifically about your son. So if you want to put down in the comments, if you would like to do that, then I will tell you how to get in contact with me and we can, I can learn more about your son so that we can make a video specifically about your son and to honor his life and to be able to share that with our Tingledom community so that other people can know about what, what your amazing son was like. Now, the, I guess, the impetus for broadening it back out to all of our tinglings now, the impetus for me making this video right now, and why I think I've felt ready to is that I was reading and I've finished this book called Finding Meaning, The Sixth Stage of Grief by David Kessler. So this is what's had my mind on the topic of grief and felt like I've been able to really delve into that a bit more to really bring to the fore what I might want to talk about in this video. And so I will, the video will probably be a little bit meandery, but the topics I will talk about are this book, and then I want to talk about 
uh, my experiences with grief and I guess watching my mom as well. So I actually brought a couple things and this relates back to this book, but I'm going to tell you a little bit of background about this book. So as I said, this is written by uh, David Kessler, who is a grief counselor and he is a prominent person involved in uh, research on grief. He worked with Elizabeth Cooper Ross, who is the one who published on the idea of the five stages of grief, and they actually published a book together as well. But so the five stages being anger, bargaining, denial, acceptance. I always forget the fifth one. But with acceptance, what he found was a lot of people would get to that conceptual acceptance place and not really know where you go from there. Or some people naturally did and he found that they were naturally flowing into this sixth stage, which he considers creating meaning. And so I guess in inviting you, Lynn, to uh, share with me the stories and perhaps to share the story of your son, I'm hoping that that may help create some meaning that we can continue the knowledge about your son and expand it to others to hopefully add some meaning. That's what I would like to be able to contribute to you. And this has really rung true to me when looking at my own experiences with grief and death. Now I'll give that I have had experiences with death. I've had my grandparents die, and I've had a few different pets who have passed on. That being said, I, I haven't experienced grief in terms of an experience where I think it would be a very overwhelming experience for me. If I lost my love, that would be devastating. I lost uh, Joe Brookie, that would be devastating as well. Or Mark, my son, you know, the, these sort of losses are not ones that I have experienced. And so it's not really to that level of grief that I, I've experienced. When I lost my grandparents, um, my relationship with my grandparents has always been from a distance because of living on the other side of the country uh, before they died. And so I would generally see them about one time a year. And so while it was a grieving process to lose them and to lose that connection that I had, it wasn't a connection that I felt in my day. Um, as it would be when I lose my parents or anything like that. But that being said, those are the probably most significant deaths that I have experienced were uh, my mother's parents. Both of my dad's parents are still alive. My uh, grandpa, who is in his 90s, actually ran a sprint, I think, last year, so um, they've always been very health conscious and do a lot to look after their health, and it is obviously paying off with their longe longevity, so I'm very lucky to still have them on that side of my family. But this morning, I was actually, because I was thinking about this video, I've been thinking a lot about my grandmother in the past couple days. And her name is Karma, which my sister actually named her uh, fourth child, her third daughter, 
karma after my grandmother, which is my grandmother's name. So that's one way that her legacy continues on, I guess, is with her name. But anyway, I've been thinking about her, and this morning I actually was crying in my dream because I had a dream that I was with my grandmother, and we were hugging each other. I was going to be leaving. I think to fly back to Australia was the idea that I was in the U.S. and I was going to be flying back to Australia, even though I never lived in Australia while she was alive. And so in the dream, I was hugging her, and she was just saying that, you know, she wanted to be closer to me, and she, you know, missed that she didn't get to see me more often. And as I was hugging to her, I was just like, oh, well, maybe we should, I'll try and call you more often. Because I never really did have a phone relationship with my grandmother. It would more so be, you know, when I saw her every year. Anyway, so I was crying at 6 a.m. Just, just thinking about that. So it is, you know, even for me, in that death, it wasn't really a huge significant death to me. It is one, you know, that still can hit me. Uh, almost 20 years later. I think she died in 2001. Maybe 2000. But I wanted to show you I have a couple things that are part of her legacy. So the first is these. Uh, this is a... I was doing this master class and he said in the master class lint-free towels. So I told my love that I wanted lint-free towels and maybe he could suggest to my mom some of the things I wanted. And lint-free towels was one that sparked her interest because she had saved these when cleaning out my grandma and grandpa's house. These were flower sacks. They go back to the 60s. And so they were they're big. They would have been big sacks. And my grandma would save fabric of everything. She had tiny little squares that were about, you know, about this size. And so my sister took those squares and made a little a blanket out of them. But my there are so many fabric scraps that my mom has taken from my grandma because she knew that my grandma was a very frugal person and somebody who very firmly believed in using what you had. And so she would be absolutely thrilled to think that 60 years later, after saving those flower sacks, that they're being used by me uh, as towels. Most of them are mainly plain white, but I really do like... There's this one and another one where you can actually still see some of the uh, branding on them. Can you find it? Let's see, almost a little special there. I don't know if it's quite going to come through. But... So I have a set, I think, of nine of these now. And so I get to, they will hang up in my kitchen. And I do think about my grandma a lot when I'm using these because she would be so happy with that. The other thing I have from my grandma, this is made by my mom. This is a lovely quilt. My mom is a lovely quilt. She's lovely orange etching on it. But these fabrics, so particularly we look at this fabric. She had this fabric up in the bedroom in her house and all of these are just reminiscent to me of to me this quilt just reminds me of being at my grandma's house. So this is a quilt we have out on our lounge. Every day. So it's 
a wonderful gift from my mom to give it to me. My life gives you scraps and quilts. My mom definitely does that. And so those are just a couple things. The quilt, I thought, is also representative. Uh, my mom really talks about in the book is people have different ways of dealing with their grief. And he said that some people really delve into the practical. And my mom, when my grandma died, and then when my grandpa died, she bought fabric and she made a specific quilt, her mourning quilts, and she used the play on words to have They were very bright and happy quilts. They were beautiful, beautiful and simple quilts to put together. But for her, I think the process of working through the fabric helped her feel a connection with her mom, who she had been watching quilt all her life. And being able to just be active while she was For my mom, because he did it uh, when both of my parents, both of her parents died, my grandparents died. And so that's, those are the major events that I've had, I guess, to do with death. And with my grandmother and grandpa, I was Mormon when they died, and so the context of it was very different. The other experience I've had with death was much less personal, but almost hit harder. And that was when Phil Hughes died, who was a cricketer. And it was interesting to me, I had not even really put the connection together, but when he died, and it made me confront my own mortality after I, you know, stopped believing in God. It took on a new meaning, I guess, for my own mortality, not just his death, but what does life mean, or anything like that. And I ended up starting work on a quilt. I never finished it, and I'm not sure I ever will. I've really stopped following cricket, and it's not something that I'm highly interested in. So I may actually just close off the panels that I have and finish them off. I was thinking about this today. But what I have is an image of him and then his property that uh, he wanted to retire to and spend his time raising cattle. And for me, I guess, yeah, the, the biggest thing was just, yeah, the meaning is huge. And I think it makes us confront those questions about what does it all mean? And what meaning is there in life? And my perspective as an atheist, somebody who doesn't believe in God and doesn't believe in an afterlife, necessarily, to me, the greatest meaning is the meaning that we and so I think there's a lot of power in understanding that we have the ability to create our own meaning for ourselves, but also to honor others and to carry them on. So as I wash my dishes and dry them with my grandmother's towel, I continue her legacy, I give meaning to her life, and it adds meaning to my own life as well, that I get to carry her with me. So, I just want to end this by opening it up for everyone who has lost anyone. Please share with us about your loved one. Continue their legacy. Tell their story down below. We would all love to just about that lovely person who you loved and have lost. And again,
again, I highly recommend this book, Finding Meaning by David Kessler. It really is very good, and he knows a lot. There are lots of really touching stories in there as well. So it can help you feel, I think, less isolated, perhaps, in what you may be going through. And know that this Tingledom community is here for you, that you are loved and you care.